Jake Ludington here at Oracle Open World, and I'm talking to Archie and Lee, two of HP's cloud advisors. And one of the things that uh, is really unclear to a lot of people, uh, sometimes to even me, is what the heck is the cloud? What do you mean when you say the cloud? And I don't know who, which one of you guys wants to take that. Oh, me? Tough question. So at HP, I'm... It's a weather front, isn't it? It can be at it times. Can be a yeah, yeah, yeah. Front, uh, so at HP, I have this strange title of uh, Chief Technologist for Cloud Security. Cloud security, very broad terms, but when we get down to it, we talk to people about uh, cloud as either being private, IT done right, very good internal IT processes, practices, optimized, virtualized, multi-tenancy stuff, just getting it right. Then you get uh, a lot of people who automatically drift towards what's considered public cloud. And that's uh, traditionally thought of like Google and Salesforce and the software things that you get out there, as well as the infrastructure players, Amazon, Rackspace, and Microsoft playing in there, a lot of players. And offering essentially IT services over the net uh, as needed, at cost or something close to it. Uh, start it up, shut it down, do whatever you want. But basically efficient services offered over the internet. And that's essentially what we talk about when we talk about public and private cloud. Sitting in the middle, we've got this concept of hybrid, where you go between public and private, essentially getting services as needed to expand on what you already do, or a community cloud, which is a group of special interests with special requirements where they set up something and share it amongst the various companies. So that's a pretty generic definition, and maybe Lee can give some specific examples. I think. Uh you know, the first thing is, oh, you know, I like to I like to address the, the the basic tenets of a cloud, right? You want to have something that's self-service oriented. You want to have something that's elastic, scalable, uh, something that you can provision very rapidly. I mean, some of the promise that we're trying to deliver on cloud is cost savings through sharing, sure. as well as business agility. So th this whole notion of agility is being able to do the whole provisioning process faster. I mean, we have customers that have gone from six-month procurement cycles to a 24-hour SLA in delivery. That's the the promise of cloud. So those characteristics we apply apply them uh, to circumstances, whether they're global public clouds or whether they're a private cloud or whether it's an outsource provider providing a cloud service to the business, it's a different delivery model. So I think we really want to focus on, on how the compute is delivered, uh, cloud being the word of the day, right? Uh, and, and, uh, and really look at uh, IT from a service brokerage perspective, where the company is, is actually acting as a broker, where IT is acting as a broker, selecting the right service that, that brings value to the business at the right cost, uh, with the right speed of delivery. Right security. At the right security, exactly. And, and putting together a cohesive strategy that allows them to deliver that, uh, whether it's through a, a Google or a building their own cloud or through an HP outsource managed service. It really doesn't matter. So. Hybrid cloud, can you give me an example of, uh, of what you mean by that? Because a private cloud, I get. It's a, it's a cloud that you completely control. Um, public cloud, you've, you've given over most of the control, but you have access to it. What exactly is hybrid? Can you give me a, an example of an, uh, an application where that would be used? Well, I think some of the words that go along with that subject is cloud bursting. So the it's cloud bursting. So the idea is that you take a workload that is active in a particular setting in this inside of a say a data center uh, that's managed by the customer, and you have a, a vehicle or a mechanism via the management infrastructure and the uh, infrastructural designs where you can shift that workload outside in the event that you have additional capacity needs or things of that nature. So that's kind of more of a hybrid approach. Uh, but but I think we also come back to the hybrid notion being a delivery model. Right, the cloud computing is going to be delivered through a variety of, of inflection points. A global cloud provider, maybe an outsource provider, or delivered inside of an IT organization. So that, by its nature, you know, three different things, uh, all cloud oriented, are delivered in a hybrid model. Yeah, let, let me give a uh, couple of specific examples. So a number of customers we talk to have decided that yeah, they want to use Microsoft Exchange, for example but for a certain population of their employees and maybe contractors, they want to push some of the cost out and use uh, Google Mail, right? So uh, Google Apps, they want to have a, uh, a number of employees out there just using that because uh, they're not dealing with sensitive information, they're ready to take that risk, the cost benefits analysis makes sense, so half of the employees are on Exchange, internal, everything's good, half the employees are on Google Mail. Another example, recently working with a bank out of uh, Canada, uh, they needed a marketing approach that they wanted to use, salesforce.com. Right? They already had a lot of programs that they used internally, 
but they wanted to push some data out to salesforce.com in order to support their marketing campaign. So essentially cloud bursting, getting some data out there, getting the facilities that were possible from salesforce.com, using those as and when necessary, and when the campaign finished, everything else came back in-house. So that's an example of going out, and they could have continued that, but they decided to use it for a short term. So in that case, cloud bursting, went out, came back in, that's an example of a hybrid cloud. Make sense? It does, and, and you raised that uh, you, you specialize in cloud security. Sure. Um, so, and that's like one of the, the key pieces of feedback I get, because all of the uh, blogging things that I do are all um, in a cloud environment, uh, because I, I don't, I'm a one-man shop, I, I don't really have the uh, time to have to support all the hardware and infrastructure. Um, so, anytime I tell anybody that though, they're like, what about security? I, I'm concerned that my data is more at risk by, by not being on a traditional server, or that because I've given my email over to a cloud hosting provider, that I, my email is somehow more at risk as a result of that. Are there, are there security considerations like that, and, and, and are they valid? That depends. So first off, security is general. The concerns around cloud security are quite often a gut reaction. Right? I'm now handing something off to someone that I haven't hadn't had a relationship with before, new company, don't know what they're doing, and that's sort of the first problem. Right? In order to really assess whether there is a security risk, you have to understand whether you can actually mitigate all the risks in the first place. So if you're a one-man shop, small business, even a medium-sized business, there is a good argument that says a cloud provider may be able to do it better than you. And I'll give an example. In terms of antivirus, anti-spam, all those sorts of things, if you were to set up your own email server, whether you wanted to do you know, Linux and some SMTP gateways, or you wanted to set a small business exchange server, there's a cost to set that up, there's a cost to maintain that, and then there's a cost to deal with all of the threats that come in via email. Microsoft, Google, a whole bunch of companies are out there offering essentially email in the cloud, branded, using your own domain names, all the stuff that you need, and you could argue that they provide a better defense against anti-spam, uh, viruses, all those sorts of things. So in some cases, if you understand the risk that you uh, are, are suffering yourself, it makes sense to go out in the cloud. In other cases, when you think about things such as uh, uh, the example we were talking about before, salesforce.com, right? You are dealing with what could be the crown jewels data for a company. Are you willing to put that into a third party data store? Now, there's been no public uh, exposure through salesforce.com, but that's a risk analysis that you need to take. Are you willing to put that data in? Versus the speed of setting things up. If you wanted to set up your own CRM application, that would take a lot of time, deal with all the updates, all the patches, and all those sorts of things. Meantime, cloud providers are doing it on an ad ongoing basis. So again, when we talk about security, if you don't understand your own risk profile, you can't compare and contrast that to what you're going to get in the cloud. So that's the first thing that we do. And we offer services that essentially say, let's uh, analyze what your risk is, what you're willing to accept, what the cloud provider is saying they do. And in a lot of cases, cloud providers will come out with something like a SAS 70, Statement of Auditing Standards, uh, level one, level two uh, certification. That means they thought about security. It doesn't mean that everything's secure. So what we do is help customers understand what that means, analyze that against requirements, but we also apply a lot of other things through our own modeling technologies. And in that case, we use ISO 27K. We've supported the Cloud Security Alliance for a long time, recommend them as a really good profile for understanding what the security risks are. We also supported research about the top threats in the cloud. So we actually have seven threats that we've identified today and examples of each and how to mitigate them. So HP is essentially, whether you're a small company, right through to the Fortune 500, we have tools to help you understand what the risks are, analyze the cloud provider, the option that you're taking up and down the stack, and then decide whether it's the right move to make.